On October the 30th of this year, we launched an updated version of the user portal on the Strata website. Some parts of the updated portal will be familiar to you if you used the original version. On our website, we have an updated portal instructions tab that explains all the new features. In this video, let's take an opportunity to walk through some of the features of the updated portal. At the start, please visit your new portal page and log on. Under our proposed plan, most eMini FX users will be entitled to a distribution. Now we're still waiting on approval from the court, but we want to be ready as soon as the court tells us what to do. What I need right now while we wait for the court is information for how to pay you if you're entitled to a distribution. So if I don't have that information and it turns out you are entitled, as most users will be, it will delay your payment. So it's important that you get that updated as soon as you can. To do that, go onto your portal and scroll down to the payment information section and fill that out. There's a pull down option to select electronic payment method. That's direct bank deposit, PayPal, Venmo, and so on. But that's the recommended way to get your payment is electronic. And, and the reason is it'll be faster if you do it that way. But we will also send you a check as long as you have the United States address. So if you want a check and not an electronic payment, you need to have a US address. But again, electronic payments will generally be faster. Now, a lot of you have already given us payment information. And so the people who already filled out that section, I just want to thank you for really getting that done right away. But I am going to make one more request of you. And so if you have a friend, a family member, a fellow church member, someone in your downline or even your upline uh, who invested in Mini FX, please remind them to go to the portal and give us their payment information. We want as many people as possible to confirm their payment information so we can make distributions. And it's word of mouth from, from you to your friends and to the community that really helps us get the word out. So let's go over a few more things on the updated user portal that apply to everyone. And then I'll have a section at the end on distributed transactions for the small minority of users who that applies to. So the first section you'll see is actually contact information. Now we have contact information generally for everyone, but if that changes, we need to update it. It's really important you do so, especially if you change your email address, because maintaining a correct email address is the way that we're going to generally contact you going forward and how we have in the past. So just click change my contact information if you need to make any corrections. You're also going to see on your updated portal page, and kind of also near the top, your claim status. And so most people are going to see a green banner and two numbers, which is your total deposits and your total withdrawals. And that green banner means all your transactions have been verified. And if you added any transactions that we accepted those additions. So really at this point, if you see a green banner, all we need is your payment information. And once we have an approved plan of distribution, I'll also post how much the initial payment is going to be under that approved plan. Now, some people, only about 10%, but that's still several thousand Imini FX users, are going to see a red banner. And that means we have a disagreement on at least one of your transactions. I'm going to spend the second half of this video on the next steps for investors who have a red banner. So if that's you, stay tuned. Please listen to the entirety of this video. And finally, we also may have uh, blue banners for some folks. So a blue banner means that you have no transactions on your updated log. In this case, there's nothing further for you to do. If you have no transactions listed, it's because I have no record of you making any deposits or withdrawals into or out of e mini FX. Now, there are two other sections at the end of the portal that apply to investors with green banners. So I'm gonna review those first, and then we'll come back to how to deal with disputed transactions for the folks who have red banners. So the first section 
toward the end of the portal is a deposit reassignment request. So this tool is only if you want to reassign one of your verified deposits to another user, meaning it comes off your log and onto theirs. So don't reassign it to yourself. We've seen some folks do that. The reassignment request must be used to resolve a dispute on the log of the investor who is receiving the deposit. So what, what that means is that the recipient of the reassignment needs to have a dispute that you're trying to resolve. And the reason we have this tool to begin with is because we don't recognize internal transfers and we have a number of inter-user disputes. So this tool allows you to reassign one of your verified deposits if you, to the other user who has that dispute. So let's say another user is claiming that there's a transaction and that's on your log, but the, user, the other user is saying, well, that's actually their funds. And let's say you agree with that other user. You think, you know what, that's right. They, even though it's on my log, I see this deposit for $2,000 but that $2,000 really belongs to somebody else and you know that, and that other user is saying, wait a minute, that's my $2,000? You need to, we need to know that you agree. And so you can use this tool to move that transaction to that other user. Now the reassignment tool is only officially available until November 15. I'm gonna leave it open over the weekend, but please do submit those requests as soon as possible so we can start processing them. When you are trying to use the tool, you'll see uh, a drop down, and that drop down will let you select one of your accepted and verified transactions. So you select one of those accepted transactions, and then you have to type in the name of the user, like the Amini FX username, who for the, uh, for the recipient of the deposit reassignment request. You can also select how much. So in this example, let's say you've got a $3,000 deposit and 1,000 is yours, but 2,000 belongs to somebody else. You can say, oh, well, the 3,000, we only want to move 2,000 to the other user because you don't have to transfer the whole thing if you want to use this tool. So that's why we ask for the amount as well, but you can also just transfer the entire transaction. Um, you know, these all do require a approval. So because we're only using these to resolve disputes, my team and I need to go and make sure that that's what's happening with every reassignment request. So we'll, we'll look at every one. Uh, it's gonna take us a little time, but we will try to get you a response on these reassignments as soon as we can. The last section on the portal is the account merge tool. And you may remember this, this was on the original portal and it can, we can still use it to combine multiple MDFX accounts into one. And this may be appropriate where you have two or more MDFX accounts. For example, you might have an individual account and a business account, which is really sort of the same account. It's the same money going in and coming out. And so this is, you can use the account merge tool to reassign. We've also seen sometimes a husband and a wife might want to combine their accounts using the account merge tool. It's another common way we see it being used. I should note here that some of you will see that a review hold has been placed in your account. And in some cases, the hold is in place because we have identified multiple accounts in your name. In that case, uh, or in others where a hold is in place, you will receive a message on the portal from my team with specific instructions. So please make sure to review the messages you have in the portal messaging tool which is also how you'll be able to communicate with us generally. Okay, so that's it for the first part of the video, the part that applies to everyone. Again, please log on to your portal and provide us with your payment information as soon as possible. If you have any questions, please email eminifx at strutter.com or call the case information line at 855-228-3721 it's a toll-free number, again, 855-228-3721. Internationally, you can dial plus one, 949-407-5078. Again, that's plus one, 949-407-5078. Now, if you have a red banner on your claim status, 
meaning you have disputed transactions, we'll cover those next. But before I conclude this first part, I do want to remind everyone that the town hall section of our website has links to the investor.gov pages on ways to watch out for Ponzi schemes and pyramid schemes. I'll also put a link to the Ponzi scheme investor.gov page in the notes below. So with that, thank you to everyone. We're now gonna go over disputed transactions. So if you don't have those, you can feel free to stop the video. But if you have disputed transactions, we're gonna spend this next part going over how to resolve those. All right, so first the deadline. You must respond by December 16. If you do not respond by December 16, this year, 2024, you will waive your right to object and we will just use our numbers to calculate your claim. So when I say our numbers, let me drill down on what I mean. If you have disputed transactions, you're gonna see four numbers instead of two numbers in your claim status. You're gonna see the total deposits and total withdrawals that you have claimed based on the transactions you submitted. And you're also gonna see the total deposits and total withdrawals that I have been able to verify at this stage. So you'll see your numbers and our numbers, and they will be different. You can respond in two ways. You're going to see another button called Accept All at the bottom of the Claim Status section. What clicking this means is that you agree to use the numbers that I was able to verify and you're not going to object to any of your disputes. Now, I want to be clear. I am not asking anyone to click this button. That is your choice. But if you do hit accept all, it will move you into green status, meaning your disputes are resolved and you may be entitled to a distribution, but at our numbers. So if you want to do that, just click accept all. You will get a final pop-up notice that asks you to confirm that you want to accept all of uh, our numbers. Once you hit confirm, your payment status, or excuse me, your transaction status will go to green, and all we'll need is your payment information. So let's say instead you want to accept some of uh, the disputes, but you want to object to some others. You agree with some of our numbers on some transactions, but on others you want to object or maybe you want to object to all of the disputes, then that, that's totally fine. We have a system for you to do that as well. So don't hit accept all, if that's what you want to do. Instead, scroll down to the transaction log and we'll go over how to do that. So when you scroll down, you'll see an updated transaction log section. It's gonna show your verified and your disputed transactions. <coughs> transactions that are verified will show a verified status. You do not have to do anything with those. A disputed transaction will show as disputed, and the reason for the dispute will appear under basis for dispute. My determination, that is the amount I propose for your transaction, is shown in the receiver determination amount column. If your transaction is disputed, the receiver determination amount may be zero meaning I have no record of the transaction. The disputed amount may also be a different amount than the user amount, which is the amount you provided. If your transaction is verified, the receiver determination amount will generally match the user amount. And so I know that's a lot of terminology, but I recommend that if you go back and you have your portal open and you look at your transaction log while listening to this video, I think that may help you understand what's going on. So I would suggest doing that uh, if you can. Uh, I do want to note, by the way, uh, all amounts also are stated in US dollars. So it's not local currency, it's only United States dollars. So there are a number of different disputes that you might encounter. As I said, the reason for the dispute will appear in the basis for dispute column. If you have any questions about what you see under basis for dispute, the different categories of disputes are listed in the explainer on the website uh, under updated portal instructions. So that's our eminifxreceivership.com website. 
updated portal instructions, and you'll see all of this laid out. Let me go over just a few of the common disputes. So the first and most common is insufficient documentation. So if you see insufficient documentation, it means that the documents you submitted through the portal weren't enough to allow my team and I to confirm an added transactions or changes you made to an existing transaction. If you wish to object to, uh, to how I propose resolving the dispute, you can select object and this will allow you to submit additional documentation or explanation. Now, if you do that, we will review it. So it's important that you upload, if you can, the best kinds of documents. So I wanna just go over really quickly what those are for the most common types of transactions. So we see a lot of coin payments deposits. Now, if this is a deposit that was really made through the coin payment system, then the best information for you to provide is an email from coinpayments.net with a confirmation of your transaction. If it's just an internal transaction on m fx just an e-wallet transaction, that's, that's not a coin payments deposit. So the easiest way to find this is to search through your email for coinpayments.net. Again, coinpayments.net. And if you make sure you've got the email with the right date and the right amount, then you can send us that email, or you can send us the transaction number, it begins with CP generally, in that email that will really help us try to figure out what transaction and the coin payments should be attributed to you if you're claiming a deposit. Now, if, if the insufficient documentation is on a bank deposit, so meaning something generally made through the Bank of America or the TD bank accounts, then the best information to provide is a deposit slip a wire confirmation or some other type of bank record that shows the funds moving into that e -mini FX TD or Bank of America account. Now, if you gave funds in some other way, you don't have relevant documentation, or you want to provide additional detail, you can also respond using the messaging system on the user portal. Every user who has disputed transactions has received a message on the user portal saying that we have disputed transactions in your account. So all you have to do is reply to that message. Our responses to those replies are not going to be instantaneous. It's gonna take us some time to get through everything, but we are going to review and respond to all messages received. Now the second type of common dispute is seeking ROI and bonuses. Well, this means that based on the documents you submitted, I think you are requesting credit for return on investment, the weekly ROI, five, 10%, or the profit pairing bonuses or the other types of bonuses given by a mini FX. Now, please understand the proposed plan I have submitted to the court does not recognize ROI and bonuses. In other videos, I've explained why and related to a Ponzi scheme. You can go to our channel, you can find those other videos. But for now, I just want to say that those are not permitted under the proposed plan. We still have to get approved by the court, but that's where we are now. And that includes payments made via e-wallet. So if that plan is approved, there's no ROI and bonuses counted toward your deposits. It's not part of your claim value. So if you see this objection and you think, no, you're actually not asking for ROI and bonuses, but for an actual deposit of funds into m fx then you can provide that information in the portal. You can either send us a message or you can object to our termination and explain why it's actually not ROI and bonuses, but that's what we're looking for when any responses to those uh, disputes. One, I think our second most common category was inter-user dispute. So these are disputes that are based on internal transfer on the m fx system, or that you're seeking credit because you gave money to another user outside of m fx So in either case, if the other user has not agreed that a deposit should be reflected on your account, or is at, you know, where the other user has not asked to reassign that deposit to you, 
you'll see this dispute category. The proposed plan does not recognize internal transfers or disputes among users regarding ownership of a particular deposit because that would be double counting. And so subject to the plan being approved, all these types of transactions are not going to be credited without the consent of the other user to move an actual transaction from their account to your account. And the way to do that, as I mentioned earlier, is the reassignment request tool. So in that case, we actually recommend that you reach out to the other user and ask them to use that tool. And so remember that deadline is coming up. I don't leave it open over the weekend, but we need to process those requests. So if you do see one of those uh, issues on your account, please try to tell the other user as soon as possible. Another most common category I'll recommend, and I've got one special one, is withdrawal completed. So this usually applies because someone has claimed not to receive a withdrawal, but we have pretty good withdrawal records. And so that means we can use those to help you. So if you have one of these objections, withdrawal completed, and you wanna know the Bitcoin wallet address where coin payments process the withdrawal, we will gather that and send it to you. So hopefully that will help you find the account that received the withdrawal. Just send us a note on the portal messaging tool. It may take us a little time to respond, especially at first, but we will respond to every request. <coughs> right. Finally, I wanna to touch on one uncommon status called misassigned. It's a very small number, only about 100 transactions out of over 100,000, so less than 0.1%, but it is important. And this means that our initial attribution of a transaction to you was incorrect. Usually this happened because two members had a similar name, but there could be other reasons. So what we're saying is, although we thought the transaction belonged to you, it looks like that transaction actually belonged to somebody else. Now, if it really was someone else's transaction and not yours, then just hit accept and we'll make sure the right person has it. And if you look, and you think, no, this transaction really was me, that's okay, just hit object, provide an explanation as to why the transaction really was yours, and we'll take it from there. But again, this is only gonna to apply to a very small number of users. All right, those are the main categories. For more detail on any of the disputes that you see, please do check the website the updated portal instructions at imanyfxreceivership.com and see a tab and that will go through all the details that I've gone over in this video and you can look at those and you can look at in French and Haitian Creole and you'll see in the upper right hand corner of our website you'll see the ability to put the website into French or Haitian Creole and you can look at that page in other language. Again the deadline for objections is December 16th we'll need to get the transaction logs done. So I'm gonna to stick to that deadline. If after all this you decide, you know what, you just wanna accept my team's recommendations, then please go ahead and accept all. Otherwise, please get those objections in by December 16th. And thank you for your time, and we're getting closer to the finish line uh, for this receivership. Thank you. <laughs>